we know f for sure that both have some similar underpinnings. Uh, genetically, there may be a number of things that hit both pain and obesity. There are uh, early lifehood traumas that have been reported for, for chronic pain as well as uh, weight issues. Um, environmentally, obviously, uh, pain behaviors, eating behaviors, activity behaviors. And then beyond that, we know that they run in similar camps with comorbidities. So high rates of depression, if you have either condition, higher rates of sleep issues. Uh, but when you have both of them together, the comorbidities work synergistically and possibly uh, exponentially to create an inflammatory uh, double or triple whammy. So you have not only your typical you know, elevations in CRP and other inflammatory markers, but you also have the introduction of um, inflammatory markers secreted by our fat cells, or your adipokines, which we now know come back and also promote more pain, not just promote weight gain, but can actually cause knee joint uh, degradation. So in the end, there's a lot of um, vicious underpinnings when these two uh, come together in the same patient. I think it's important to, uh, at every visit, look at uh, the weight and height and that gives us our simple BMI. Uh, it just is a starting tool and it's the one that most research has used. We know it has a lot of weaknesses, but at least it's a starting point to say, okay, that you're above 30, um, we should pay attention and see what else is maybe behind the curtain. Beyond that, we know there's a lot of data looking at what's uh, termed as the metabolic syndrome, issues with elevated glucose. So doing a metabolic panel that looks at glucose, uh, cholesterol panel, if you have very low HDLs, very high triglycerides. Um, as far as body measurements, uh, waist circumference is something we do in our clinic. And we are more so using um, body fat percentage because we know now that there are a subgroup of folks who are called normal weight obese, where the BMI might look great. You have the color chart and they're lining up perfectly, but they may have metabolic issues, including high body fat percentage, which you can check within a few seconds using an uh, impedance meter, like a, a kind of a fancy scale. And that promotes a better conversation. We're not just trying to improve how you look on the scale, but your overall metabolic picture so you don't end up having diabetes, heart disease, on top of your pain. We well recognize that it's a very delicate subject, both for the uh, doctor, because studies show we don't want to talk about it, because we know the patient doesn't want to talk about it, and we know that we've both failed in trying to do something about it for probably many times. So recognizing that, uh, but also recognizing that there's a lot of myths uh, that uh, surround the topic and there's a lot of areas of hope. For example, um, the myths that I mention to my patients most often uh, include you need to lose a lot of weight to get pain reduction. Uh, studies show 5% can have up to a third reduction in pain in some studies. So we're talking about 5 to 10%. We also know that people even with severe knee uh, arthritis can get benefit. Um, doesn't preclude exercise, you just have to have adaptive exercise. Um, we, there's also a myth that um, it will promote um, further degradation, let's say, of the knee joint. The, the, the studies actually show that in some, in some ways, weight loss can actually increase uh, joint cartilage, actually a reversal of what co was causing the pain. So there's a lot of hope um, that if you kind of put it on the table, we're not just trying to, again, force you to lose weight, it's more about your metabolic picture and your function and you can get a big bang as far as weight pain reduction with small consistent weight loss. I think it, it shifts the picture to we're going to have a better chance of working together.